Today I'm talking Palantir a wide variety of subjects because I just want to test out my new editing workflow on the new computer. So let's get started talking about something I haven't talked about in a while because there hasn't been much activity and that is ARK Invest's holdings of PLTR stock. So you'll recall that after the Q2 earnings report, ARK was buying big. They loved the results and they were buying huge and then you'll see of course the stock rallied back up to around 28, 29, and they actually sold at around 28.77, unless actually I think I can scroll down and see. Yeah, so basically September 23rd, two sell orders, ARK K and ARK W, and pretty much that has been the last trade they made on Palantir stock. You'll see their ownership has just been moving sideways. The stock has been trading sideways, but a little higher in recent weeks. So the question is, will they be buying back in to Palantir with the Q3 financial results just around the quarter, just around the corner for the past quarter? That is the question to be answered. And we have seen historically, just like with Q1 and Q2, that they do like to buy after the, the results to make sure Palantir is financially sound as strong as they can be. And there are often product announcements. We saw the product announcement of Foundry for Crypto. Maybe they talk about that a lot more comfortable jumping in and buying some, so we will see. But jumping on over to this part of Kathy's ARC, we can actually see Palantir stock comes in at number 14 in ARC's combined holdings. And they have six positions, six lots, I guess you could say, from $22.84 to $24.67, representing $850 million. Again, I really wanted to see them get it up to a billion dollars, but I totally get that they can't just go all in on Palantir. That wouldn't be going all in, but ARK does own almost 2% of Palantir's outstanding shares on the market, and it is worth over 2% of their portfolio, as, and this is, of course, a $50 billion company. So moving on to something else, we have the institutional holdings. So the institutional ownership has been moving up, at least from what I can remember, 26.73% is higher than I can remember it being. I could be wrong on that. I do remember when it was under 20. I do remember when it was around 20. Someone's going to need to check me on that because I don't have access to the Bloomberg terminal right now. But I do want to make sure that we're getting this right. And it does seem like institutions are buying back in to Palantir. And then here we are on Seeking Alpha. I just wanted to point this out. I find it interesting that there was no news really about the crypto announcement. I'm going to get to that in one second but it wasn't even talked about. The most recent news we have is this partnership with MSP Recovery and Palantir, something about the healthcare system and the army contract news. So basically this stuff was from early to mid October and now we are in about to end the month of October and haven't had anything published. So I'm wondering why the crypto news wasn't talked about. I think it's huge news. It doesn't re really mean much for Palantir today, but it has a lot to say about Palantir in the future, let me talk about that now. So what does Palantir Foundry for Crypto have to do with anything? Well, I've had a pretty big realization and it might not be a realization for you, but for me it is. Palantir with their engineering talent, with Carp's relentless focus on building the best software possible is creating some of the most important building blocks for their mission, which is to be the modern operating system of the modern enterprise. So what does that mean? Well, that means that if you scroll down here, you'll see and we've talked about this, I'm not going to reiterate too much, they've actually built out the anti-money laundering long ago. This is not the beginning of what they've put into Foundry for Crypto. You'll recall I've talked about the Foundry impact studies and this was on there, the fraud detection might have been, I don't recall exactly. But if you do want to go look at that, I'll leave the link in the description. Pretty much, as Carpus said, they've built 400, 500 separate applications that come together in one to make up Foundry. But to target these lower markets, the future of finance, as they say, and sure, it could be, it could be really any size, but to really get further down market to kind of select a niche as they have with Foundry for Builders. These are smaller companies that are focused on building the future. Really, it is a lot of physical work and actually building hardware. But with, of course, crypto, that is all virtual. And what they're doing is they're taking the subsets of Foundry that they've already created, repackaging and just slimming it down like this is the only stuff we need, building out more components that would actually be helpful, turning that into the best 
package for Foundry for Crypto that they can provide. The thing is that they've been working hard. They've been investing in R&D. Let's take a look at R&D. So R&D, if we uncheck that. Now that's just because they had to probably put some of the cost from the listing into R&D. But ignoring this, we've had a pretty flat but yet increasing, as you would expect, R&D costs. But look, they've been doing about 70, 75, 70, pretty much 80, 90. All right, now we're up to over $100 million of R&D. Now, where is that money going? That money is going to developing the software, building out the platform, and creating these things that might not seem like in 2019 or certainly earlier have a big impact or could really mean anything in the context of what they've made in, the, in their software in general. But when you see an offering like this brought together bringing together anti-money laundering, something they've already developed a long time ago that now comes into play. It's really a sense of leverage. They put the work in, they build what needs to be built, and it gets utilized and maximized in the future. So I really think what Palantir's doing, if they can build these building blocks, and I really think that those building blocks become stepping stones or even <laughs> launch pads into future products. And I think that is something that is dramatically underrated. So I wanted to bring that to your attention. That's just what I'm thinking. I know I laughed at the restaurant question. That's just because I completely read it wrong. But really, everything that Palantir's doing, and I'll have to get this impact page to load. I don't know if it's down or what, but uh, it's not my internet. So I don't know. I'll have to get that going. And then we can theorize on future. Now that we know this is a theme, Foundry for Builders, Foundry for Crypto. I really do think we could see many more versions of this into the future. Really wish I asked Palantir more about that. We had not heard of this uh, for the say questions, but if I do get that chance, I will certainly ask about future iterations of the Foundry 4X in the future. I did ask you for rapid fire questions on Twitter. So shout out to everyone that responded. Of course, you can follow all these people since they're very into Palantir like myself. So what would Palantir look like and could they make money from the metaverse? Now we had the news from Facebook, or should I say Meta, that they have rebranded and their stock ticker is going from FB to, I believe it's MVR. S. I think that's the ticker. Wildly confusing. Anyway, could Palantir make money from the metaverse? Interesting. Interesting. Not really something I can answer very quickly off the, off the top of my head. I would say as it stands now, I don't really see that happening because of their focus on, on business and commercial. But if there is a commercial setting for the metaverse, of course, there will be eventually. I do think that they could do something and they could have a huge role to play in this sort of additional reality in which it's a great question. Far away at this point, just in my opinion, but yeah, I think it's it's a fascinating idea. How is Palantir going to help regulate the crypto world? Well, we do know, I wouldn't say it's more about regulation. It's more about helping companies that are, for instance, the exchanges securing themselves, securing their exchange. So I don't know unless the government, we do have something interesting, I'll bring this up in one second, reaches out to Palantir, they will actually be working with the individual exchanges and such and other crypto related companies to actually build the products and, and improve their workflows. But uh, not necessarily regulate, but one second on that. Tim Busby was asking for maybe a video on how I make the videos, which I'd be happy to do. Probably just not right away. Dividends, are we getting them soon? Yes, I made fun of that uh, say question. I didn't really mean to. I probably should have removed the person's name. I didn't, I'm not trying to target that person or, or anything, but it's kind of tough to see that. Will Palantir be able to properly penetrate the Asian market? Now, that's interesting. Obviously a huge market. Obviously something that Palantir would do well to be able to have access to. I'll have to ask someone uh, more knowledgeable than myself on this on this area. What is the best way to describe PLTR in layman's terms so that uh, anyone can see the potential in? So I've actually done a supercut. If you, if you look up Supercut Investor Day, it's pretty much one hour, but it's a supercut. I broke it down. I cut out the parts that weren't important, um, but it really explains the business. It has nothing to do with me. It's not my analysis. It's literally Palantir explaining their offering as a stock. I think it really is the first place you should start as a Palantir investor. So I would absolutely recommend that as a starting place uh, and a place to get excited for the company. Do you see a future in which Palantir designs and develops a hardware product? If so, what could it be? I'd love to see them create a crypto hardware wallet. Obviously we have existing 
hardware wallets. I don't know, hardware product. It, it's another great idea, not something that would be happening anytime soon, but we know that Palantir's focused on the human uh, AI symbiosis, and I don't know if there's a product that really plays into that. Of course, there's the Neuralink, which Palantir probably is trying to stay away from. Maybe they could build on top of it, but that's not really what their core business is about. Maybe they could do a partnership with someone in the future for a hardware product in which they design, they design the interface layer for the hardware product and their name is also on it, something like that. I will keep thinking on that. Great, great question. Why the stock is stuck in place and won't hold gains? Well, if you zoom out, the stock is up over 100% and actually more than that, 169% to be precise. It's just worth noting that even if you didn't get in before the, the initial run up, the stock has been holding its gains. It's run up, it's more than doubled, nearly close to tripled. Yeah, there was a point down here where it was around $16. So I'd say it's holding up fine. Sure, it hasn't rallied very much, but I wasn't expecting it to. I haven't bought calls or leaps or anything just yet. I think it's gonna be a quarterly occurrence. They're gonna they're gonna break records, shatter estimates, and all of that. I think the rotation will continue higher, but I'm not a technical trader. I would, I'm just observing the company and bringing you the news and my analysis of it. So yeah, it's definitely disappointing to see the stock staying flat. If you bought up here, it's, it's down considerably. But this is a $50 billion market cap company, and it certainly has room to run. It's just very hard to predict when. Strong link between FDIC pilot program element Mantis and Foundry for Crypto. Okay, so this is what I was getting at. Um, there is a possible connection between the FDIC program and Palantir's announcement of Foundry for Crypto. So here is Sahid, who actually reached out with an email. Thank you so much. Um, found an interesting connection with the below article, which is talking about regulators, banking, holding crypto assets, all of that. Definitely a connection in the article by the FDIC chairman and Palantir's a finalist. So pretty much it's all coming together, really. Foundry will play a major role here and doesn't believe there's any other product that matches Foundry for crypto. I definitely believe. I bet Palantir will win a major role with the U.S. government when the U.S. government decides to create their own digital assets. So I very much appreciate you uh, sending this along. Definitely something to think about. And I think that definitely, I think a lot of this is tying together. Whether it actually is real is another question, but it's very interesting to see all of these puzzle pieces kind of coming together. The working with a crypto company, even before they announced Foundry for Crypto, they have the FDIC pilot program, which supposedly has nothing to do really with crypto. And I mean, it could have all along. And then all of a sudden they're talking about crypto. They're going to release a, some sort of coin, right? It's really all coming together. Really doesn't matter if it actually does in the, in the end, but lots of, lots of things going on. What is your best opinion on what they actually do? I have made a video on this. It is just, if you look up probably Palantir Vision, Palantir Introduction, I actually talked about that. Seems like a lot of people have a hard time grasping what they provide. Yeah, it's just software as a service. It's for business and government. So I think that's as hard as it gets, really. Further we dig into what they actually do will help investors see the huge value they can create. I definitely agree with that. Um, look at Palantir's own videos if you want to go to their YouTube channel or stay on mine with the supercuts. I definitely think hearing from them is is probably one of the best ways to do it. So I'll leave it there for now. I just wanted to get this video out and I wanted to kind of yeah, test out my new workflow here. Hopefully this was helpful, at least at some point. I know it was a little rambling at times, but yeah, it'll be very exciting to see. I have to do another earnings estimate with the analyst previews um, that will be coming. Oh, I also have some long form content coming. I'm excited for that. Until next time.